Hey, good morning, everyone. We are going to be taking a look at this bad boy, and I am stoked uh, because I actually bought this about two weeks ago, um, but just now have gotten a chance to unbox, like kind of open it up, organize some of the uh, figures in here, and we're going to take a look at that. But before we do, Kara is just right over here in this little box, and uh, she is doing a puzzle, so we're going to hop in the Discord with her and hang out for a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to pop in there. Let's see. Good morning. Good morning, Matt. <laughs> can, you, can you hear me okay? I can. Okay. And are you just trying to be the best friend on the planet Earth by wearing your Coheed and Cambria sweatshirt this morning? Or Obviously. <laughs> I, I figured uh, you were the most badass. You are now the most badass woman on the internet by wearing that. So. Oh really? I mean. I mean, should I go snag my signed copy of the vinyl as well to just oh. show that off too? <laughs> you may as well. Uh, yeah. Any <laughs> any fan of Coheed and Cambria is a is a friend of mine and uh is absolutely based so um but yeah no i'm glad you're you're wearing it i remember we got that at uh, la so yes we did i love this hoodie and yeah. it's so comfy so um How are you doing? i'm doing well i should be asking you that though um you sound you sound good but are you still kind of recovering better. okay I'm doing a lot better. Good. Okay. Um, for those of you who may not know in the chat, Kara, or at least for my chat, I'm sure your chat is on board, but uh, yeah, Kara got the old con crud from MegaCon. So. I did. I got the crud. It, uh, it happens to the best of us. Them. By the way, guys, Max is here. Yay. Mr. <laughs> Maxi Poo. <laughs> uh, my alter ego uh that josh will call me when i'm being an idiot is maxi pad and then i'm like oh <laughs> thanks for that buddy <laughs> <laughs> love you josh <laughs> exactly right so. from what oh no um it's just a cold it's just the con cred i'm fine it's just um annoying more than anything yeah yeah you know, I like the fact that you have the song in your uh, at the bottom left hand corner of your stream as well. That's cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's just a little widget that you can add to your um, as a browser source to your overlay. Mmm, that's super rad. Yeah, that's cool. Um, all right. Well, I'm gonna ask you tons about megacon because i haven't seen you or heard from you and uh we haven't really gotten a chance to talk in like maybe two weeks i want to say yeah um we've been i mean well i've been sick you've been busy mm -hmm. um yeah. so this is a, uh, it's been a crazy uh, crazy time yeah um so i'm gonna ask you about Megacon and how you've been doing. And while you're going to, or while I'm asking you those questions and whatnot, um, I'm going to be unboxing for the chat, uh, the new fantasy Warhammer box set, uh, that just came out. Uh, they're calling it Warhammer old world, which is just essentially Warhammer fantasy for those who were playing fantasy back in, uh, like fifth edition and sixth edition. Um, but yeah, it's like medieval knights and paladins riding, you know, pegasuses and you know, like <laughs> men at arms, and it's very, uh, very medieval. And uh, I love the aesthetic. So they released these models, and we're gonna take a look. So, um, yeah. But yeah, so I don't know if you've already spoken about this on your live streams or not, but did you have? a favorite moment at Megacon. I know it's tough to boil it down to just one, but... I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, G meeting Gina was cool, but... Honestly, 
just like getting to meet so many people in our community is just such a like heart filling thing like and I'm still um I still have that imposter syndrome that I've kind of been like brought into this community like sometimes I feel almost undeserving to be um welcome in so quickly hmm yeah um I think that's part of it but honestly it's just Meeting so many people was just so freaking cool. I mean, and um, I just I genuinely had a good get a good time seeing everybody. Um, like that was the first time my husband had ever met any of my friends that I'd met on the internet. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. Uh huh. Okay. So that was that was the first, which was really interesting. Him seeing me like in my element and around people he saw me in in my work mode oh i love um, that yeah so that was a new experience for him um and that can be and pretty intimidating a lot more like he already is like my biggest like supporter but i think he has a a new sense of like appreciation for how hard of a worker i am and uh, he says I collect people very easily. <laughs> yes, that that tracks. Yep. <laughs> I, uh, you know, that's great because I, I seriously think that sometimes it may be important for a significant other to see into the world, into the life of their partner, because whether it's like, you know, seeing them with their best friends or seeing them in a work environment, um, you get to see that other side of them that's like just as important um and you almost like you said you get that greater appreciation for them uh so what a cool experience for you and your husband because even after all these years of marriage to have something like that where um to have a new experience like that i think is is really really cool oh of course yeah so but uh yeah i love that that's cool and think what did i buy because somebody was asking me what i bought at MegaCon. Ooh, Personally, that's a good I question did, i didn't buy a whole lot i had one friend that i went and bought like some stickers from at his booth with his wife um who he had a artist alley booth and he's my he's who i dubbed as my like him and i have been friends since i first started streaming like years ago Hmm. And um, we, I'm his con wife, and he's my <laughs> con husband. Um, like we look out for each other whenever we're at these events together, um, because typically our significant others aren't there with us. So, like if I'm working a booth, like he'll make sure to like come bring me cough drops and making sure I'm fed, Aww. like that kind of stuff. That's awesome. And, like, if I'm not working and I go to an event, which honestly is very rare, um, um, he, like, I'll make sure he's taken care of. So, it's one of those, like, just, we, we mutually take care of each other and look after each other. Yeah, it's, uh, I think the con, the, the convention circuit, no, like, and connecting with the right people um, is super important because at least for me, I have had my life completely changed and saved at some of those conventions. Uh, cause like my friends that have booths will be like, Hey, just put your stuff down here. It's totally fine. You can hang out at our booth and we'll, you know, we'll take care of you. Or, hey, you want lunch? The, we're going to grab something to eat or, um, uh, what's another one? Uh, or, they'll be like, hey, I got you a pass so you can get in early or something. So knowing the right people, having the right connections and the right friendships can really, like, in terms of the convention circuit, um, really change a con. Uh, it can be, it can suck, you know, <laughs> uh, or when you, you know, have friends that are looking out for you, it makes things, like, ten times easier. So that's so good that you hear, or that's so good to hear that, you have, uh, it's kind of like 
the term work boyfriend or work girl work wife yeah. work <laughs> but um work yeah well, that's cool so it looks like there's another two of these guys or three total so um the other oh i was also going to ask uh Gina Carano um huh. did you guys get to bond over the cancellation and i know that sounds weird but did you guys get to kind of share in that experience when you spoke to each other or she knew did she yeah. know who you were um, she i don't think she knew who i was i think she had like vaguely remembered hearing about it but like at the time i don't think like that she knew who i was but like jay of course being jay and being the sweetest person that there is was just like oh my gosh like gina i need to i need to introduce you to this girl and was like hyping me up so much to gina and it was just such a a sweet experience because jay is a freaking sweetheart and i love jay yeah um and i just i'm still just so shocked that um like that i had the opportunity to meet her was really cool I do think that there was that sense of, like, connection, I guess, if you could call it that, um, in regards to, like, having a, um, a similar event that kind of set us on the path that we're currently on. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's impactful, I think, to have two women of character um, in the same room together because, you know, everyone talks about quote-unquote strong female characters, right? And then to actually have two, um, you know, women who are, like, living that out is a totally different, uh, totally different mindset, a totally different lifestyle, you know? And um, I, man... When she dropped the, hey, uh, we're going to go ahead and take take on the big guy, you know? Oh, that was so cool. I, like, I like, oh. on our way home, I was in the car and whenever I saw the news for that. I'm like, oh, my God, she's doing it. Like, she had, she had hinted to, like, Gary and them that something big was coming. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anybody would have expected, like, this level of, like, the finger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is unprecedented. No one thought that they could touch Disney. And I think that's the big question is, you know, oh, well, is she going to win? Or is, is, does she have a chance? And realistically... I don't even know if that's the right answer to ask or the right question to ask because just the fact that this is that that she's taking a stand against such a large Disney. entity. Yes. It's David and Goliath and mm -hmm. just the that simple fact alone um speaks more about her character and the the change in that we're making here in our fellowship is just uh it, it's just so cool to watch it happen in, in real time but yes i agree um and yeah i'm hoping that even if you know regardless of the outcome i hope that the right people uh are seen as who they are and that the receipts are shown for everyone to see, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, right. Oh. oh, I think that's what everybody is looking forward yes. to. Yes, is the receipts. Could you imagine? Yeah. Wow. Well. Oh, it's gonna be. It is going like oh, it is gonna be an event to remember. That is for sure. Yeah. Uh, we've got Cajun Corey celebrating 19 months of a membership. My man, dude. Yeah, thank you so much, Corey. Uh, and he says, I went to bed last night early, so did you enjoy watching Buffy? Uh, so, Kara, for context, Josh and I did a member stream. Uh, and so we streamed 
Buffy season one, episode one and two, because I've never seen the show oh. before. Oh. And Josh is holding my hand and walking me through. And uh, so for the members, we're going to watch Buffy season, pre- pretty much all of Buffy, and then we're going to watch Angel after. But um, yeah, we're doing just kind of watch parties. And last night was my first ever episode of Buffy season one, episode one and two. Um, all right, thoughts? I I mean, Josh is in the chat as well, so he he will he will probably speak on this as well. But um, I like the cheesiness of season one. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I, I like the schlockiness a little bit. There's a bit of the dated '90s terminology and um, you know special effects and costume and you know whatnot it is definitely 90s at its finest oh yes but uh i kind of i kind of like that um already i'm super invested in angel i want to know more about his character i want to know how he plays into the larger (laughs) uh you know into the larger like universe i guess um Mm -hmm. i like the dynamic between the librarian and the two or sorry excuse me three uh high schoolers um Mm -hmm. buffy xander and willow and then um yeah i think that's so far that's pretty much all i have but you and your husband are actually watching this as well, right? You guys are going through it, but you've seen it already. I have watched all of Buffy and all of Angel. Ooh. I watched them as they released years ago. Oh my god, like wow. Okay. I'm I'm yeah, way behind like, then. Like so Buffy and Angel actually has like a really significant part and like a sentimental like moment for me because my family used to get together every single um wednesday evening and we would watch buffy and angel together oh that's awesome that's really cool so there is that side of it too for me and um i mean and of course like outside of that i just it's it's vampires and it, you can't really go wrong with that like it you have to go out of your way to do bad with well i mean you could go wrong with it. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I think that's really cool that it has played such an impactful role um, in your life, especially, you know, watching with watching it with family or whatnot. Um, and just, you know, from what I hear from how Mahler talks about it um, as being one of his favorite franchises or TV shows of all time and talking about how... Um, they're some of the best character developments of all mm-hmm. time in entertainment, you know, um, character arcs. Like Spike. You're going to love Spike. Oh, th- Josh is... You don't see Spike until the second season. That's Yeah, that's what Josh said. He was like, you're going to like Spike. Um, I think I'll, I'll really like Angel. And then there was one other guy. And Josh, if you're if you remember who it was, it was like three three names or something. Um, like William something something, or it was, it was something like that. But um, that was another one that Josh was saying that I might enjoy. Um, but Josh was very adamant about saying that he did not, he does not like the cheese of season one. <laughs> oh yeah, the cheese of season. Like my husband had a very hard time. Like I've been watching it, and he'll come in. He's like honey, you're watching your show and he'll just laugh at it. And um, I was like, it's okay. Like, you don't have to like the show. I was like, I'm watching this because like everybody has been talking about it again and it's really just kind of got that nostalgia Mm -hmm. like kind of that nostalgia that I that I'm really wanting. And uh, I was like, you know, like, let's just go ahead and watch it and and uh, it hasn't 
uh, disappointed, I think is the right word. I am glad to hear that. Um, and yes, Josh says Wesley. He thinks I'll like Wesley as well. Oh. So yes. we shall see. We shall yes, see. Yes, you'll like Wesley and Angel. Sweet. Yeah, I'm all about it. Vampires and, you know, d despite all the stuff that has happened with, you know, Joss Whedon or whatever, I still think that he's an incredibly talented writer. Um, and so... Yeah. I mean, that's definitely... Oh, like, it is perfectly fine. Like, if you can, like, remove the art from the artist, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's fine. Um, I do think some people have issues doing that. Um... I personally am not one of them. I'm I'm perfectly fine with removing or at least having that separation for the content that I enjoy. Yeah. Sometimes, of course, there is going to be uh, that overlap, but in Buffy and Angel, I really I I mean, honestly, it's been uh, thirteen years since I've rewatched the whole thing. Oh my gosh! Okay. Wow. So, yeah, it's like, and I don't remember a whole lot of the plot points right now just because it's been that long since I've watched it. Um, it'll, be, it'll be good to revisit it again then for you to take a look at some of those. Yeah. I mean, I was in college last time I watched them. And I only did one one year of college, if that says anything. <laughs> so, just wasn't for you, huh? Early on in college. Was it? Uh, I was gonna say, was was it just the schooling? Was it the classes? Were you just like, nah, this isn't for me? It just wasn't for me. Um, I I I never really liked school, and at the time, I had already gone to school for a career I already had my license in cosmetology so I could do hair for a living if I wanted to oh yeah I did that while I was in high school so there wasn't a whole lot like like in school that I that was really like I just I didn't know my place yet I didn't know what I wanted to do and I mean I'm 30 almost 32 years old and I still like don't know i don't have like some big overarching goal for my life i just want to be happy and enjoy what i do um and i'm doing just that right now so well i'm glad that uh that you chose the path that you did because that all led you to uh to this place and to um yeah to joining this this, you know, huge friend group and like, you know, really solidifying a place um, for yourself uh, in this, you know, n not, I was going to say in this um, work environment, but I would almost say more so even in just in culture in general, um, you've really solidified a place for yourself because when when the history books look back and they go all right let's look at all the people who have made a difference in the video game world and the ent entertainment world and this and that um yeah you're you're gonna be in the annals of history so i think uh i'm, I'm glad that that you ended up going with your gut and saying you know what i'm just gonna do cosmetology and and uh and then that's how I met my husband was doing hair. Yeah, that's right. So and I have the most supportive husband I could ever dream of. And yeah. He uh, uh, he enables my my nerdiness. And uh, you also have not a, add on to it. You also have that beautiful boy looking at you right now, Gus. His face looking no, at you is like very needy right now. Oh, I love it. Do you need something, sir? <laughs> You've already been fed. You've already been outside. He's just like, he keeps resting his head on my leg or on my oh, hand. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Are you being so, he's only like this on Sunday mornings. He knows that you're getting attention from another man. <laughs> so yeah. he gets upset. Are you a jealous old shit? Is that what's going on? 
I'm gonna take your, you know? No, you gave it to me. This is mine now. You gave me your paw. This is mine. <laughs> this is mine. Yeah, your fat body can't hold it all up without all four paws, huh? Silly dog. Go lay down. Uh, Framinator, who's in the chat, says, uh, what miniature games do you play? Um, for me, Framinator, I have strictly only done, uh, Warhammer 40k. Um. Nerd. I know. <laughs> Fucking nerd. Um, yeah, I do 40k. I've never gotten a chance to play Old World, um, or, you know, classically known as Warhammer Fantasy. And I never really did Dungeons and Dragons. Um, 40k was enough for me. I have played Templars and Custodes. That's normally what I've played on the tabletop. I think I played Ultramarines once, but it was like, eh, they're, they're fine. It's, there's vanilla. There's nothing really that fun about their tabletop experience. But um, now, Kara, do you you did D and D before all this, right? You've done D and D before. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have sat in on like one of like a boyfriend who did uh, Pathfinder, but I I've never actually done it myself. Hmm. Okay. What is Pathfinder? Is it just another form of? It's just another tabletop type game. Okay. Uh, it just, it's just not for me. Uh, I just like the the thing that I always say is I don't have the uh, the improv skills for mm. those types of games. Yeah, it's tough. Um, I think that's really important, and uh, it's just a, a skill or a talent I I don't have. Um, but I enjoy watching other people play it. Yeah, and hey, that's fair. That's totally totally fair because uh i do not have the skill or the hand-eye coordination to do like video games so that's <laughs> that's my uh that's my crutch is that like i i enjoy watching other people play like when you guys stream no man's sky or uh pal world or whatever i will watch that um and gain enjoyment from that but i tend to not play because i i know i'm bad i'm bad <laughs> but yeah. uh and i mean it's like that with like the talking streams that you guys like to do like i'm not great at those oh really like, panel streams and stuff um at least i like one thing that my husband is um <laughs> all right um Like, um, we were talking one day and I was like, you know, like, I always enjoy like watching these kind of stuff, but I don't think I have the patience to be on like the bigger panel streams, like, mm. like FNT. I couldn't do that on like a regular basis. Right. Um, like I love watching FNT, um, but I don't think I could ever make it like a career for me. Like, I just, I don't think that is, uh, I don't have the, the patience for that. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. I enjoy I mean, watching them because there's some really good conversations that are had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's what I enjoy from it. I think, um, and I noticed this on Friday. Um, so Friday night I did a live stream with my buddies and we went for about two, maybe two and a half hours. But um, we were kind of doing a parody. Uh, you know, we had like alter egos and everything. And just by doing something like that, uh, whether it's two hours, whether it's four hours, no matter what it is, uh, those live streams take a lot out of you. Um, they do. And I, I think it's funny because most people will just say, oh, but you're just talking. You know, like what? why is it? you know, why does it feel exhausting or why are you tired afterwards? And I think it's just because you have to be totally, totally aware. You have to be speak or take, yeah, you have to be on, you have to be articulate. Um, and you have to be 
entertaining for two, three, four, sometimes four hours. Um, mm-hmm. And that's re- it's way more difficult than I think people recognize. So after a stream, I tend to just kind of turn all, everything off and just like I won't talk to anyone because I need to like recuperate and recharge. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's tough. So, I, you know, I don't blame you not doing the live streams because like, like we're talking about. One, it's a lot of patience, and two, it takes a lot out of you to be that on for for that long. Yeah, and I mean, I think like how my husband described it, and I, I'm like this in video games. It's like that. It's I am the same whenever I'm in video games. I am a great support character. Mm. Like I will be there to help and add whatever input I can to to help with a situation but i think i thrive most in a supporting role that's Mm. where i can do my best work so more is like a uh like if someone had you on as a guest or something yes um yeah because that that is a little bit easier i still feel like you you know like whenever i'm a guest on something i feel like i have to add to the conversation and still be on um but it's not as being a being a host of something is whew, it's tough it is it's tough and i don't think i have the uh the patience for that yeah um and i'm <laughs> i'm like that happy medium of like an introvert and an extrovert mm-hmm. like i can be an extrovert for a very short period of time and then once I hit that limit and that switch flips, I'm like, okay, I'm ready for bed. Yeah. How can I get out of this situation as swiftly as possible? Yeah. Say the, you know, give the, the old Irish goodbye, just dip out of there and uh, go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. It. I mean, obviously I'm a little bit more like polite about it. Oh, of course. Yeah. For the most part, I, uh, once I, once I see that I'm starting to hit that limit, I'm like, okay, I need to get out of here soon or else I'm going to start getting mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I totally understand that. Um, I think, you know, even for like the meetups, you are kind of, you're, you you know, you're of course yourself and we, uh, we always try to be as authentic and genuine as possible whenever we're meeting people. But, um, it is, you're putting your best foot forward. It's kind of like an interview, like where you're, you're still yourself, you're still authentic, you're, and you're still genuine, but uh, you're high energy. You know, you're meeting people, you're looking in, in the, looking at them in the eye, you're asking them questions, you're being very engaging. And at the end of a meetup, it's like, okay, I'm done for the day. <laughs> I'm, done, I'm done. I'm just going to go home and like lay in bed. So... Um, That's why I think it'll be interesting um, for Vegas this year since they're doing two meetups. Yeah, um, that's right. Since I'm going to be there with X-Ray and with like, I'm staying with people that are very involved in that um, that space. So I will likely be there for both events. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm, uh, curious to see how well I do. (laughs) <laughs> I think if we get our rest the, like during the day, um, I think we should be fine. Or we'll just have to chug a monster and just go for it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, because I'm planning on taking at least... I, th- I know I've got one ticket, to, or two tickets to... Um, cinema con right now that i'm so i'm taking gary oh nice uh, okay i'm gonna try and get a couple more i don't know if i'm gonna be able to yet um, that's great that you were able to snag tickets yeah I, it's just because i know people yeah <laughs> like we were saying it's all about those connections so yeah i'm I'm excited. I I genuinely enjoy these events, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. And 
it'll it'll be a good one. Uh, yeah, and oh my gosh, yeah, of course, this will be our uh, our little anniversary because this was where no. I first met you last year. So, uh -huh. um, so that'll be fun to reconnect and get to see each other and. We'll see each other in Dallas again as well and get to walk mm -hmm. the convention. And uh, they've already released a name of some of the comic creators, and they like, they're bringing it this year. They have like really, oh, really? yeah, they have some really cool names on the list. So um, I'm very excited, really looking forward to uh, the list of guests this year, which should be cool. I haven't even looked at the uh, the Dallas stuff yet. Well, you've been so. I know, right? You're like, I don't want to think about another convention for a while. I think, um, yeah, you you guys went so heavy at MegaCon that you deserve, um, you know, some time to recoup and decompress. Um, mm -hmm. I was gonna say, how did uh, how did the Ripa bur uh, Ripa booth do? Um, and how, like, what did you guys have selling at the booth? Uh, who was there most of the time? And then do you guys think you would do another convention? Like, is that in the books or, um, but I, I so also know, you yeah. we did our goal. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. For our first booth ever, we exceeded our goal, um, in what we were hoping i think that it really kind of like i I'd, I'd been pushing for eric to be a little bit more open-minded to events um and i think this kind of helped him see that we are a space that needs to to be there um as much as people want to talk online that's just online twitter is not real life um, there were so many people there that were in the industry that were extremely welcoming and like went out of their way to make sure that they got to come up and meet Eric and meet team. Um, like there is other comic creators that were like going out of their way to try like to just to be able to come and say hi. So it was really interesting and uh, we definitely will be doing another booth um, right now we're planning to have one at Dallas Fan Expo excellent okay so I will be there for work <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Um, I I'm I will, um, yeah I'm selfish I'll try to get a little bit of time away but I don't know how much time I was there all day every day yeah for uh for megacon i believe um, it out of my own choice um i am very i am a like whenever i get into work mode i am in work mode yeah it's very difficult to get me out of that especially at an event because i mean i used to run these for like the biggest uh for some of the biggest events in the world like i used to work at um um for dreamhack i handled um events for their north america circuit so so i handled a lot of the like i was still on a volunteer basis for the first couple of years so they would basically come in and hire me um to manage like the scheduling and be a like section runner so i handled cosplay i handled the scheduling for the stream studio i handled scheduling for tabletop like i i did all of that man so like when i'm in work mode like i'm in work mode <laughs> yeah yeah i believe and I've, I've seen you i think i've seen you in work mode um like whenever we're, I think it was the Dallas meetup, um, not the Dallas Expo, but the meetup um, when you guys were selling stuff at 
your booth um, at the bar, like, yeah, I, I love to see you in work mode because you just completely <laughs> get uh, in, like, you're you're in the zone. You're very, uh, yeah. very focused. Very much so. Yeah. But that'll be great that you guys have the booth. And like I said, I'm a little selfish. So, of course, I'm going to want to be like, but she needs to hang out with us and walk Artist Alley. But um, I also know that you have a job to do. And this is uh, something that you love to do as well, that it brings you joy. So I do love it. Yeah. So I will Very not. happy with where I'm at right now. Good. Good. And I will not take that away from you as much as i would love to walk around the convention with you and take you away from the booth <laughs> i will not uh yeah i will not be selfish but um i, I will leave it when i see it yeah right <laughs> that's fair that's fair i will most likely have to get josh then to hold my comic books for me so while we're going from booth <laughs> to booth i'll get josh to be my little uh helper my little uh helping your con husband yeah hey i'm all about that um everybody needs a con spouse yes <laughs> uh yeah because last or for la i became melissa's pack mule essentially i was just carrying all the stuff and uh i was fine with it though because i didn't bring a backpack so i was just like yeah i'll carry something um, but yeah, it was, it was fun to just hang out with you guys and walk around and goof around. Cause that, yeah, it was fun that LA had that like whole anime section of the, <laughs> of the con, which by the way, I think I see that little waifu protein shake you got there. This is the, um, the Genshin Impact little shaker. This is my favorite shaker. I use this every day. That's right, uh, yeah. Because it's one of the metal ones. Oh, that's dope. Okay. Now, speaking and of I the... I am slightly addicted to BGG subs now. <laughs> um, Maybe just a little really bit. really good. I actually just put in another order last night. Oh, um, nice. I really like them. Now, speaking of supplements and shakes and shaker bottles and stuff like that... Um, your fitness update the other day on Twitter, I think it was the other day, uh, you're looking really great. And I'm really, really proud of you for like making this a priority. But how has the fitness journey been going? Have you been seeing more results? Have you been enjoying it more? What's What's been going on there? I really been loving it i can definitely tell when i don't go work out because mm. i'm very grumpy that day yeah um but i um i genuinely like it more than i ever thought i would nice um like to the point to where like i'm already looking forward to hopefully i'm feeling better um, because I would like to go back to the gym tomorrow, but I've taken off this week. Uh, well, I went Tuesday because I was feeling better, and then it was kind of like a false day, like a, almost like a false spring. Oh, yeah. Um, Ugh. and it, like, Wednesday hit me like a truck. I was absolutely miserable on Wednesday. Um... But, I mean, I've really been liking going to the gym. It's a great way to start my day, and I look forward to it. I've never been a morning person until I started going to the gym. Oh, um, I love it. But I actually just went and picked up some BCAAs and some creatine a few days ago. Cool. Hell yeah. So I can kind of work on that um, because I've noticed I've been getting really sore because I've been upping the the weights mm. lately so i'm starting to i've been i've been feeling it well i have grown to love that feeling because it means that you're you know as weird as it sounds your muscles are actually breaking down 
um, to then build back up. So, mm-hmm. um, build back better. Ex- <laughs> exactly. And so you would, you know, I'd have, whenever I was doing personal training, I'd have people come in, they'd be like, man, like, is this normal? Like, I feel like my muscles are like, I can't move. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, as, as long as it's not like an injury type of feeling, um, the soreness actually means that those muscles are, uh, are growing that, that you need to rest them so that they can, you know, tear down, recover, and then build back up uh, a little bit stronger. So, um, it's a, it's a good feeling cause it means that you're doing something right. I've really, really been liking it, and I'm I'm ready to get back to the gym this week. I'm tired of being sick. Oh, yeah. It's such a such a nuisance being sick, because it's not like you know, you, you don't really know when you're gonna get better, and so you're just kind of trying to rest as much as possible and take mm-hmm. you know, chicken soup and vitamin C I and. My whole routine. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a total buzzkill for, you know, (laughs) (laughs) for your lifestyle. It's just annoying. I want to feel better, that way I can get back to my routine and get back to what I need to do because I'm already behind on, like, the plan that I have. Oh. Yeah, it's... At least, like, the workout regime that I'm doing. Right. So... No, it's, it's totally, you said it best. It's annoying. (laughs) It's being sick is, is nothing more than just one big annoyance. Uh, it's stupid. It sucks. But, uh. And I'm definitely a creature of habit, so. Oh, okay. So, well, you are very type A, which I like. Um, and it probably helps with your. At least I think you're more type A because you're always scheduling and you have like plans for plans and, you know, uh, documents for documents and stuff. So you are very <laughs> thorough. And... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I definitely don't do that. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, I'm sure being sick is just like the worst because it ruins that whole flow. It does. It's dumb. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and Josh will be. Josh will be at uh Vegas as well. So he says, uh, Kara, I'm gonna get to see you at Vegas. Yay! That makes me happy. Yeah. Me too. I'm stoked because. You know I, I tend to see Josh every week on line like on live streams and stuff and i'm blessed that i get to see you guys so often but there's nothing than there's nothing better than being in person so agreed i completely agree with that like internet's great and all but there's just there's nothing else quite like seeing your friends in person yeah i always uh it's always funny because I want to, because I'm like physically there with people, I'm always very, the sound, this is going to sound bad, but I'm always very touchy and handsy. <laughs> so like, You're affectionate. Yes, thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, You're but yeah, I'm like, affectionate too. yeah, and that was actually something I uh, told my husband first. Uh, whenever I was like, just, you know, like I'm a hugger, Mm -hmm. like obviously like, you know, I'm a hugger, but like, I'm, I'm affectionate with my friends, obviously not to the point of creepiness or inappropriateness. Absolutely. Yeah. Just need you to know. (laughs) Yeah. Cause I'll just be like standing there and we'll be like waiting in line or something, or we'll be like, like, have your arm around each other like that. I'll, like, be, like being in each other's like presence is just nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, or like for Josh, I'll just punch him every now and then and just be like, "Hey, hey, you idiot!" And I'll just you know give him a little love tap just just to let him know 
that I love him that that he's right next to me. <laughs> I don't actually punch him, but <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'm. It, okay. it just crossed my mind. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's just way more fun to just like uh, when you're with someone uh, in person when you get to see them all the time or get to hear from them all the time. But then once you're actually there, uh, like you said, you want to make the most of it. So you're always like, you know, rough housing or hugging or whatever mm -hmm. it may be just to really get the full, full effect of it. Um, That's nice. So, Oh yeah, gosh, <laughs> Josh says, yeah, but you grabbed my butt, so it's okay. <laughs> well, I wasn't talking about that, Josh. Gosh. Why you gotta, why you gotta call me out? Yeah. Damn, dude. Uh, well, I, did, I guess I did say I was handsy, so that's fair. You did. <laughs> Those were your words. Those were my exact words. Especially when, you know, we go to Vegas... And, uh, you know, for the meetups and it's just like, Hey, you need a, you need a drink ticket. All right. You want another drink ticket? You want another drink ticket? <laughs> it's like, Oh, okay. Or, uh, and another one. And another one. exactly. You get a lot of people too, that, uh, want to buy you drinks. I'm sure that was a reality for you last year. Uh, yes. We're not going to talk about how drunk I got. <laughs> I was uh, a few too many deep. <laughs> hey, that, you know, just means you're having a good time. And I uh, I think I it's great. I called me drunk for the second time. Ever? Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. At, uh, at Megacon with X-Ray. That's hilarious. What did he think? Eight that we've been together. Was he uh, was he ready for it, or was he taken back? I think he got a chuckle out of it. That's nice. He's like, you drunkies. <laughs> He's just talking a lot of shit. That's what he does. Yeah. <laughs> Army guys tend to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, I, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm super glad. I was going to say something about, oh, um, yeah. So for the Vegas stuff, it's always funny cause you can't say, you can't really say no necessarily. Cause like someone will be like, oh dude, I, I got you a shot. And then I'm like, oh, thank you. But I, I'm I'm super drunk right now, so like I'm good. And they're like, "What am I gonna do with this? Come on, you gotta take this shot." And I'm like, "Uh, okay." <laughs> so like, or, or like someone's like, "Hey, I got an extra drink. Like, I'll just uh, you know, you want one?" It's like, "Oh, thanks, man. I I guess I'll just sip on this, you know." And then that just happens so many times throughout the night that by the end, by the time it's like midnight, you don't realize how many drinks you've had. So. Yeah. Oh, risk it for biscuit. Uh, Rupert Bruce, we don't have anything currently planned for um, North Carolina right now. Um, or Ripper Verse booths. Oh, is there um, going to be a, uh, is there a convention in North there's Carolina? There's a convention called Galaxy Con here every year. Oh, cool. Um, I typically will go to it. It's fun. That's what was going on last time you were in this neck of the woods. That's right. Okay. Um, it's, is, it's typically pretty fun. Is it more comics? Is it more video games or entertainment? Anime? It's more entertainment. Okay. I think. Nice. Storm Hunter with 100 Bitty says, A friend of mine tried to tell me there's nothing funny about mountains. I disagree. They're hilarious. Nice. <laughs> I love a good pun. I love a good, a good dad joke. They make me happy. I was going to say, yeah, that's a, that's a quintessential dad joke right there if I've ever heard one. <laughs> 
I don't really uh, uh I don't really have that many. Uh, GalaxyCon was once held in Minnesota back in 2019. It sadly hasn't been held here since. Oh. Yeah, we have it here and it's in it's up in uh up in Raleigh. I live out in the middle of nowhere, North Carolina, and it's very nice. Yeah, I know you were trying to look for uh, places for your sister wife to move out there with you. Yes, I actually, there's a house that just went up uh, for sale, like, around the corner from us. But it's, like, a $700,000 house. But it is gorgeous. It's, Ooh. like, a completely redone, like, it's an 1800s house. And it is, like, it is absolutely gorgeous. It's on, like, two acres of land. Wow. It's it's really, really nice. And it's just like right around the corner from us. I was like, hey, here you go. She's like, that's out of our budget. <laughs> but I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair. Man, I, I was going to say, that's, uh, that's fairly, that's more expensive than I would consider for North Carolina. However, I have been hearing within the you know with whisperings within the web um that yeah texas north carolina arizona tennessee all these places that a lot of people have started to kind of move to because of the low uh you know low rent low mortgage um mm -hmm. these places have now began have begun to raise their prices in order to you know, have competitors because you've got people moving from California to Texas who have tons of money and they're putting these bids down for these houses that are just exorbitant amount of, of cash. Yeah. And, um, so I have been hearing a lot of that. Uh, so I wonder if maybe that's, that's it. But if it is, you know, a, a beautiful house, then yeah, that, that tracks to be. I mean, they were, they posted pictures of when they bought the house four years ago and to what they had redone it too. Like they showed side by side pictures and it is absolutely insane how much work they put into this house. Mm -hmm. Like it is like the price is understandable. Okay. And it's like the first house you see as you come into this neighborhood and it's it's just a really, really cool looking house. Like I remember the first time we uh, we drove down here to come look at the house that we're in. Like that was the first house you see as you're coming into the neighborhood. Ooh. I'm like, oh my god, this is so cool. Okay. I'm trying to look at the box set here because there seems to be some box art for one of the figures and I'm trying to make sure I get the the right headpiece for this character so let's see if we can find it better get right next I know, I know the pressure is on uh do you have anything going on this afternoon are you guys playing video vidgy games yes I don't know what we're playing yet, but oh. I know that Sunday Fun Day is still on. Um, that's, uh, that's all she wrote. That's all I know. Nice. <laughs> okay, yeah. We are playing video games, we just don't know which ones. So, What I would asked you... Them last night what we were wanting to play, but... Hmm. What, would you, uh, what would you like to play? What would you hope that? Um, I mean, that... I want to try Helldivers, but the servers on it have just been so bad, especially for, like, PC. Um, like, I haven't even been able to get into a server yet. Ooh. What's it called? Uh, Helldivers 2. Helldivers 2. What's, what's it about? Um, it's kind of like a horde mode game. Um, so it's just killing a lot of monsters while trying to secure an objective. Oh, okay, cool. Killing yeah. monsters is always fun. Have you ever, so have you seen the movie Starship Troopers? 
Yes. Or did you watch them play the Starship Troopers game at all? Mm, you know what? I may that have. Was before I got in the Sunday Fun Day. Okay. I may have briefly watched one of those streams that they were doing Starship Troopers. Um, I think it was what it was as Core Black and X Ray, and um, yeah, I forget the context of it, but I have seen the film. Uh, but it's it's kind of okay. like that where it's just kind of an invasion of aliens or whatever attacking. Yes. Okay. Yes, alien bugs is what you're murdering in this. Nice. Well, that's always uh. It's always a main objective, is when bugs are trying to kill you and eat you. <laughs> it's probably good that you try and bugs kill them. To die. <laughs> yes. Yes. If they want to kill you, then yeah. Um, well, I guess even if they're just... Because, like, cockroaches, I... Like, I can't... Spiders, I'm okay with. Cockroaches, nah. I'm out. Yeah. I can't do it. No. Roaches have no place. Yes. None. Straight from straight from the devil himself. <laughs> created <laughs> created cockroaches. Ugh. No, thank you. I found out I'm allergic to them too. What? I didn't even I know found that I found that out whenever I had um so this is gonna sound really gross. Oh no. Um so you know how I have lizards. Yes. Um there are a certain species of roach called dubia roaches that are very healthy for reptiles. So I had tried to uh, basically um, like have a little box and like raise some because they're very expensive. Mm, okay. And um, <laughs> I went to go try and like clean out the uh, the thing and feed them and I found out that I uh, as I broke out in hives that I'm allergic to them. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I guess that's a good thing cuz that means that you like have to stay away from them. Yep. So and it's I'm sure my husband appreciated it too. Oh yeah, that you guys didn't keep roaches in your house anymore. That is a good thing. But I will say they're quieter than crickets. Oh, well, crickets, I feel like, would just be noisy as all hell. They're so noisy. Uh, so noisy. Speaking of bugs and spiders and beetles, um, did you see the newest spider bug people person film, oh. Madam Web? <laughs> Yellow Flash had me watch it before I was on there last night. Oh my gosh, so you did actually have to watch it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, and I do not appreciate it. I did not appreciate him wasting my time like that. Yeah, two hours of your so, of your life. It was so bad. Like, and I'm not kidding. Like, I'm, like I said earlier, I try to keep kind of a, an open mind compared to a lot of people in this space. Yeah. Yeah, no, that movie is just shit. <laughs> <laughs> Even Kara, the most positive and uplifting of us, was is like, yeah, no, it's just terrible. Just shitty. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just bad. Yeah. Just garbage. Yeah, and, and that was one thing that um, I think a lot of people agreed on. I was with Polly Latino Slant. Uh, we did a video afterwards, just really briefly after the th after the movie theater, and we both kind of agreed that it's not like social justice politically correct bad. It's just bad. It's just yeah. It's just poorly made. It's just, it's just so freaking bad. bad. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, and then uh, I was with Aaron Sparrow and uh, Frank Gore. Or Frank Gore, <laughs> Chris Gore, when we uh, got to see the movie. Gore. Yeah, he's he's I mean, Frank Gore. Was he drinking? If he was drinking, then he is Frank Gore. Um, you know what? That's a good question. We met for dinner before, and I don't know if he was drinking or not. He was. He had a. I don't think he was in the theater. He wasn't drinking. So. So he may have been Chris at that point in time. Okay. But uh, and then baggage claim 
showed up uh, unannounced, actually. I had no idea that she was going to be there, which was super cool. But, um, yeah, I saw the, the group picture that you guys took. That was really fun. Yeah. Really oh, I was I was stoked to get to actually, like we were talking about, see each other in person and actually catch yeah. up and hang out because she's been on the live stream before, but, um, you know, getting to actually talk in person is different. So, um, but we, yeah, we all kind of had that universal consensus of like, I wasn't cringing at like the messaging. We were just cringing at like the dialogue and the direction and like the acting and uh, just the performances, like everything about it was yeah. just, man, this is not you could tell good. that absolutely nobody wanted to be there. Yeah, no one cared. No one wanted to be there. Uh, I don't think a lot of people took it very seriously. Um, and so, and you can see that on the, uh, on the screen, unfortunately. So, yes, but I am sorry that you had to watch it. I, I thought you were going to escape from that fate. I was hoping I would escape from that fate, but no, <laughs> I did not. Did you have like a, a yellow flash, I think, but that's, uh, yeah. Hey, I mean, Josh will have to blame me then. Cause I made Josh watch it. And uh, he was he was not happy with me, so because we're gonna talk about it tonight. Gok, thank you for the forty-one month resub. Over Oof, on Twitch. Dang, nice. Thank you so much, Gok. That's awesome. This was there a you have the link to MVP's channel. Um, he is linked down in the description. Um, so if you scroll down to the description of the of the of the video you'll see you'll see it linked there and he's actually in the title of the stream as well so if you just go to the title of the stream and click his name up there you'll be able to find him yeah thank you so much and that's i've i've liked that uh that you can tag now on youtube so like i just mm -hmm. tag you in the title um that way it, it's pretty easy to click on there and it'll direct you right to your YouTube. Um, I was going to say, did you have a favorite part of that, of the film? <laughs> Question mark. Like th favorite meaning, like, was there a part that you were just like, I cannot believe that this is happening or I don't know. Uh, the, uh, moment where she drove I don't know I think the the industrial grade fireworks oh that my went lord a brick wall was uh that was just bad uh, that was really bad yeah the, the the firework the whole third act of that film was brutal Hell. Oh like, yeah! Oh, we're the equalizer. We're gonna set all these traps, and we're gonna be so cool. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. I guess it was kind of the equalizer, huh? Going into the warehouse and just you know trying to pick them apart. Yeah. No, they did not succeed in that. No. Um. Yeah. The. The ambulance was pretty funny, crashing through the sign and. Like landing oh, God, directly on Ezekiel, I was just like, "Wait, so, <laughs> wait, what? Like, how did it get up? Oh, she was on the parking. She was on the second floor of the parking structure, maybe, and then flew through the sign. But then, how did she know she'd Don't land think on? Too hard about it, Max. Don't think too hard oh, about it. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. You're gonna lose brain cells trying to um, think out these plot lines. Yeah. It's just, it's just bad. It's just really bad. But, uh, you know what? I, I hope that this ushers in kind of a new era to say, like, all right, we're, we're done with this whole thing, right? <laughs> we're, we're done with these. Like, can we focus on good storytelling again? Um, we're begging you. It's, oh, my God. We've I been... will give you all the money if you just give me one decent thing to watch. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. It's like 
you guys want money, right? We'll give you money. We have money to give you. <laughs> what? Why not give us something we want to give our money to? Um, but no. They want to give us Madam Web, so. Yeah. I mean, I just love that even the people, like... They've just been trolling the hell out of that movie since it released. Oh, like, yeah. Even the actors and actresses. Like, Adam Scott's been trolling it. Uh, Dakota Johnson. She just doesn't give a shit. No, her and, interviews. And Antonio Banderas is her stepdad. She just, like, sh she doesn't have a, a shit to give in this industry. No, not. Well, she, even her persona, even just her, her as a person, like, as Dakota Johnson just seems very out to lunch she just seems like she doesn't care um mm -hmm. and i don't know if it's just that's her personality but like you said if she has connections she's like i can do whatever i want and i know i'll have a place in this industry um it's yeah it's like kind of an indifference where she's like i don't really care uh hey that uh, works for you <sighs> Damn, I guess. Um, I was going to say, uh, it, you know, you said Adam Scott. I think he was probably the only lifeblood and the saving grace of the film. Um, I really liked him a lot, and I liked how he portrayed Ben Parker. But, I mean, that's even working with, like, a really rough script. Um but you could tell that like Adam Scott was actually like I think he looked like he was trying. So he's the only one in that movie who was trying. Yes. Even then, you could tell you could still tell that he didn't want to be there. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He he knew what this movie was, and he was just like, you know what? I'm a professional actor. I'm gonna act, but at the end of the day, I know that this is not gonna be that great of a project. So. He's like, I'm just ready to get back on the set of Severance. That's all he wants. Oh, is that what he's recently been doing? Yeah. Okay. Severance is so good. What's that about? Uh, basically, it is. It's a. Uh, it's a kind of like a psychological thriller. Set. It's on uh, Apple TV. Um, there's this surgery that can be done in your brain. Um, that will basically, um, what is the word? Separate your consciousness, uh, whenever you're at work and whenever you, like, so whenever you get to work, you're a whole different person. I mean, it's still like you, but you have no memory of the outside world. What? And you have, and it's the same whenever, like, you're leaving work, you have no memory of what you did at work. Whoa. Okay. And so there's this whole, um, like, is it slavery in a sense? Because these, these, these people, these, these, these consciousness have no, like, outside experience, have no outside life. They don't really know why they're their their outies is what they call them hmm. um uh why that they've chosen to to put them in in this uh this place like they try to like fantasize about like what their outside life is like and it's it's pretty interesting i was gonna say that sounds like a really great commentary or that they probably could commentate or commentate on um just the work-life balance in general and how our society sees um work-life balance and what that looks like for uh for the corporate world um for civilians you know but uh what an interesting concept i like that a lot yeah because it plays into like yeah. you said um absolutely amazing show yeah like i love it it is so freaking good that's cool. ben stiller actually is the the like writer and director of it no way okay all right yes who would have thought and simple like, jack yeah right it is it is definitely like 
Apple TV has been cranking out some really good content, is what I will say. Nice. They have made the platform worth it. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of shows on Apple TV that I would happily watch again. That's cool. I, yeah, I've heard that there are a few good ones on there that are well worth the money. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's tough, you know, because you look at something like Peacock and it's like, am I really getting my money's worth if all I'm watching is The Office? You know, so. Mm -hmm. um, but with Apple TV, it sounds like, yeah, you're getting some pretty high quality material, so. I really like Apple TV. Nice. Oh, geez, I just saw what time it was. Um, oh yeah, you gotta get going. Oh jeez, and of course, as soon as I say that, I freaking get a jump scare blurb from Guck. Thank you for using um, that that scary noise on me. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I need to get some. Uh, I need to get some some food in me. I've got some leftovers from yesterday. Um, that I need to go heat up and start prepping for my game stream for Sunday Fun Day with the crew. Hell yeah. Well, yeah, have a great rest of the day, and thanks for uh, meeting with me, with me this morning. I'm sorry that I was late. Um, but oh, no, you're fine. You told me when you were going to be here, and I was just like, you know what? I just need to go ahead and get started on this. Um, that way I can get a little bit of headway in before I needed to end. I mean, I've gotten, I got a good chunk of this puzzle knocked out today. So. I was about to say, the fact that you have like pretty much the head and the tail, like that, that alone, because now you just need to work the inner body, but yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. pretty solid. So. Yeah. And like, this doesn't really have a whole lot of like outside, it, it doesn't have corners. Yeah. Which so is the toughest part. Lot, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm. I'm figuring it a lot, figuring a lot out. Yeah. <laughs> as I go. Well, it looks sweet. Yeah, it looks super cool. So. Um, thank you. But yeah, no, thank you for like I said for hanging out. And uh, guys, please go make sure to check out Kara uh, this afternoon playing some video games. Um, and yeah, her channel is seriously worth it. I love the stuff that you do on there. Um, I just know. <laughs> hey, honestly, that's a I I like Low to. Energy. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm driving or when I'm building, I don't need I don't need a lot of high energy commentary stuff. Sometimes it's just better to watch, you know, video games or build streams. So uh But yeah, we will see you guys next weekend. I don't know if X ray will be there. I think she's still gone, right? I do not know. Okay. One last piece. Yeah, I got one last piece before I left. Oh, nice. I, like, I think I know where this is. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, guys, it was fantastic. I will see you guys here in about 50 minutes for some games. If I, I don't know what we're going to end up playing. It may, may be enshrouded. Um, if the guys decide that they want to do their own thing, I might just jump back into Grand Blue Relink. Um, but yeah, I think that's the that's all I've got today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful uh, Sunday. I hope you have a good start to your week. And I will see you guys soon. Yeah. Bye, guys. Take care, guys. Have a good rest of the week. We will see you tonight for Max's Man Cave. Uh, we'll be reviewing more Madam Web stuff, unfortunately, or fortunately. But take care, guys. Have a good one.